Our opener is, as threatened, Damian Demento and the Repo Man versus the Bushwhackers. So they have the heels come down to the ring, and they play the Bushwhackers music, and we are waiting for the Bushwhackers, and there's no bushwhacking going on. There's just like the empty entrance ramp. And so there's not even a ramp. It's a Manhattan door. There's, there's a there's a there's a there's a hole in the wall they come out of. Yeah. But we're waiting for him and we're waiting for him. And I thought, oh my god, they actually going to do an angle on Raw? Like they're going to be laid out backstage. And it turns out that the Repo Man, you know, repoed their whatever. <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but it's WWE, so you can imagine. But anyway, all of a sudden they they Vince goes, oh look at that, they're in the crowd, and uh, up in the upper balcony, the Bushwhackers are coming through the crowd, and. They're licking people's faces, yeah. mm-hmm. which, you know, I mean, it was always a little bit weird, but we're in the middle of COVID, yeah. and these two creeps are walking through the crowd licking other humans in the face, yeah. and there's like, they're licking little girls yeah. in the face. Yeah. They tried to lick some lady who attempted to flee, and they were like grabbing her. Hey, you're going to get licked. And so they're they're coming through the crowd, and I'm like, Fuck. And then Vince goes, we'll be right back with the opening match. And I thought, okay, so they're going to go to commercial, and they're going to, like, double time it to get down to the ring. And sure as shit, they don't. They go to commercial and come back. They're still in the crowd. So I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but uh, the show's an hour, and uh, you take out commercials, and it's 45 minutes. Well, for some reason I can't explain... And I'm not complaining. <laughs> this show was only 36 minutes. Yes. So nine minutes of something appears to have been edited off this show. I can answer this question. Okay, so, but oh. before you go on. Yes. So I, already there's only 36 minutes of content here. And they've been walking through this fucking crowd for nine minutes. Yeah. So as much as I was like, are you two fuckers ever going to get to the goddamn ring? Once they got there, it was like, can you go start oh licking God. people again? Because this fucking match was horrible. It was. Fucking horrible this match was. And what? not the fault of the Bushwhackers. I don't even know where to begin. First, I'll answer the mystery of the I've already began. Ten minutes. Uh, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but Joe Gagne is doing a watch-along with us on Twitter. He's watching the same episode of Raw we watch every week. It's Joe Gagne. Gagne. Hmm. Regardless, he explained the episode is... Uh, they cut out a ten-minute segment... About the Michael Landon Award that Vince won, probably because of the licensed music. Uh, well, uh, no, hold on, Gagney. I'm sure that's what they edited out, but it would have nothing to do with the music. Because there was an Andre uh, segment on this show that I'm sure was not the music that they played here. Yeah, and yeah. they also mentioned, and I want to bring this up. Vince says, uh, or maybe it was Pat and Gil, somebody. And they said, coming up on uh, one of our shows this weekend. Main event. We have got a special video. About the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Yes. Set uh, to the tune of Respect by Aretha Franklin. hmm Bro, I remember this vividly. I watched that video thousands of times. And not only did I watch it thousands of times, but I was a senior in high school, and I was in video production class. So what I did was I recorded it, and then I took it to video production class. And uh, back then, you had to use two giant fucking VCRs to record shit back and forth. Yeah. But I took all of the YWF footage that I could find. Oh, my God. And I literally recreated this video. I used all YWF footage to replace all of the Bret Hart footage. I kept the music in. I kept the part where it goes, R-E-N, and it puts the letters on the screen. Like, if Bret was doing a backbreaker, I found the Beast doing a backbreaker. Fuck, I, and like, weeks, I think. But I don't know if I'll ever find it, but it does exist. I have it somewhere. And uh, I fucking loved, loved, loved that video. And I would presume that they're going to air it on uh, whatever, but they're not going to have, obviously, the Aretha Franklin music. So I, I'm sure that's why it was edited out, but I can't imagine it was because of the music. Because they just put in shitty music for everything. Now, was this video better when you replaced footage of... Bret Hart with, for example, Redwood or Newprint? Well, for me, it sure was. I, see. Right. I mean, fuck. Newprint versus Redwood <laughs> in there? Yeah, that was some good stuff. All right, so... Imagine... I can just... 
like I know this is, this is a really really old show at this point. I know there's a lot of younger wrestling fans who are only familiar with like AEW and Ring of Honor and what they've seen on Raw and SmackDown in the past five or six years in NXT. And imagine showing them the Bushwhackers, and they lick fans, and they do a wacky little march, and they go hey, and that's it. That is the extent of what they do. That's the whole act. There's no <laughs> nothing to wait for. There's no secret in. And imagine what they would think of it. And then this match. I am fairly certain that until the uh, Jackie Gata, Chris Nowinski match from like 2003, mm. this had to have been the worst match in the history of Raw. It's unimaginably bad. Well, it certainly was up to this point. And I imagined it would be very, very bad. So the Bushwhackers, during their nine-minute march to the ring, Vince is explaining there's going to be a special show Sunday night, the March to WrestleMania. Included in that is a six-man tag featuring the Bushwhackers and, quoting Vince McMahon, one of their mighty midget friends. So the match finally begins, and in a tribute of hearing the two midget wrestling, we get double ass-biting. So they're doing this match, and for a while, it's merely bad. For Garden Variety, bad. And then Damien Demento begins to fuck up everything. <laughs> so I don't know what they had planned, but here's the spot. Planned? Here is the spot as it unfolded. God, this is, this is classic. You think they planned any of this fucking match? I certainly hope not. No, it's impossible. Damien whips a bushwhacker into the turnbuckle. The Bushwhacker, they have the heat on him, by the way. They're working him over. They're beating him up. The Bushwhacker takes the buckle, steps out from the turnbuckle. They gently brush shoulders, and both men take a bump. Mm -hmm. And Damien Demento smacks the mat in anger, and he jumps up and just starts beating up the Bushwhacker again. Hey, believe it or not, uh, I actually saw a worse spot on Raw Monday when uh, Rhea Ripley grabbed Tamina by the wrist for a series of clotheslines, and Tamina just bumped no clothesline. Just I've, a phantom bump. I've done that. Yeah. I've done that. That's, I retired. Um, and this match was still 25 times worse than that women's match on Raw. I believe you. Which was very, very bad. So everything in the ring is going wrong. Repo Man's in the corner. He had he's Most of his career was a tag team wrestler with the Russians or in demolition. And he's watching this horror show unfold, and he holds out his hand. And Demento won't tag him in. <laughs> He just wrestles and wrestles and wrestles, and finally Repo Man gets in there, and of course he tags right back out. This thing goes on for a while. We get they repeat the double tackle spot. So I guess it was a very well, you important. You gotta get your shit in, dude. It was a very important point in the match. They just did it too early. So Butch gets a hot tag. The hot tag he makes on the Repo Man. You ever see? Uh, <laughs> This guy used to be Demolition Crush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, he, uh, smash. Sma no, he was Crush. Oh, no, he was Smash. No, You're he right. Was smash. Crush You're was right. Crush. Yeah. Right. That's pretty easy to keep that one straight. But anyway, so in like, in like the uh, the karate and kung fu movies, and I'm sure they have in real life too, but you got the, the wooden dummy that you work on, all these strikes and periods of stuff. Yeah. Uh, sure. That's what it looked like this bushwhacker was doing to Repo Man, except it was much, much slower and more gentle. But Repo is just standing there as the bushwhacker waves his arms and hands and... And, and fists about him. This goes on for a bit. So the finish is supposed to be that uh, Damien Demento has his back to both bushwhackers. They're going to grab fit, grab each other and do like a double clothesline, but he's going to duck. But apparently Repo Man from the floor gave Demento the cue way too early because Demento ducks and hits the ground before the bushwhackers even started to move. And they grab hands, and they look, and they see Demento's down, and they just do the spot anyway. They just run right by on top of him, and there's like a trip, and a slam, and the ref gets distracted because this thing can't end soon enough. And finally, the Bushwhackers win with a battering ram. Fuck, this is horrible. You had Demolition Smash. The fucking Sheep Herders. And I guess Damien Demento. That might have been the big problem. But yeah, this match was absolutely ungodly, impossibly fucking horrible. I mean, God. God, it was so bad. And I was so excited to see the Bushwhackers. 
Smash had one good gimmick, and he was never any good ever again. I mean, there was points... Bill Eadie can't be that good. There was points where he was... I mean, most of his tenure with the Russians was average, and some of his stuff he did, like, on Nitro was average. The Blacktop Bully was average. His gimmicks were terrible. But this was... Oh, man. It was awful. And to put it completely over the top, Vince McMahon, I don't know what got into him. He was on 12 all night. He well, was, he'd been gone last he week. He watched Bartlett last say. week. <laughs> he was marking out for the Bushwhackers. Gotta coming show this Bartlett I ought to do this job. He was just out of his mind. And, and then this match, and he was still out of his mind. And uh, the only other comment I had, Vinny, do you remember sitting next to Luke at the very first ROH show we went to on WrestleMania weekend? No. Yeah, he sat with us in the back row, and I can confirm he did, in fact, lick me. <laughs> You're a lucky man. I guess. No, this uh, I, I, I got zero, literally zero memory of that happening. Those yeah. guys must have incredible immune systems. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Been exposed to everything? Yeah, dude, I used to teach kids gymnastics and jujitsu, and like I never got sick, because I think I was just constantly exposed to all these pathogens every day. And this guy going and licking all these wrestling fans? Golly. They have, they have sheep herd immunity. <laughs> that was a good one, Craig. Craig got me. Craig, that was a good one. Craig got me. Sheep herd immunity. So speaking of jokes, Vin, the Bushwhackers are posing and licking and whatever, and Vince makes some comment about how they're going to be in the cover of Gentleman's Quarterly. He popped Rob Bartlett. He did. He popped Rob Bartlett a few times. He did. Like Vince was on his game. <laughs> There was another one where uh, one of the uh, one of the ring girls was wearing some outfit, and uh, uh, Rob goes, "I got a couch with that same pattern." And I think I can't remember who's in the ring. Maybe it was Tatanka, but Vince goes, "You got a couch that looks like Tatanka," and Rob Bartlett laughed. He goes, "I'm talking about the other one." Like, man, good job, Vince. Well, speaking of Tatanka, Vince was a funny. A gregarious guy. Dude, Vince the had the best line ever on the show. I'm, we'll get to it when we get to it. But it was unreal. Hey, girl, how was your New Year's? Oh, it was so much fun. Brooks and I put our boots on, and we did a little Texas two-step. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. Daddy, these girls are so you. Um, who are you? I'm Wendy Chu. And why are you looking at me like a ham sandwich? Wendy who? Ham sandwich? Wendy Chew? Then it ends. Bro, that was like easily a thousand times better than what they did. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.